It's time for Around the Ozarks in 5, brought to you by Talking Rocks Cavern. Explore the beauty above and below ground at Talking Rocks Cavern. The Springfield Green County Park Board reminding you to go play and Roto-Rooter Plumbing and Drain Service. Call Southwest Missouri's best plumber today for a free estimate. Here are your hosts, Ethan and Sarah Forhats. Well, good morning. It is not Ethan or Sarah again. You have yours truly, Diana Tyndall, filling in for them while they are out. And I have, again, back because he loved us so much, <laughs> our guest co-host, Joe Dawes. Welcome, Joe. He is from BCFO, which stands for Breast Cancer Foundation of the Ozarks. So thank you for what you do for oh, uh, women and going through such a hard time, I'm sure, in their lives. So, all thank right. Well, nice to be here, Diana. Yeah, let's get to some news. So um, Mercy Orthopedic Hospital in Ozark has a new robotic surgery system called the Veles Robotic System. I hope I hope I'm not screwing up the name, but a Veles Digital Surgery by De, De Puy, uh Synthes is a robotic assisted surgical system that attaches to the operating table bedside and is used for accurate and precise knee replacement surgeries. How handy, huh? Mm-hmm. According to the new um, the news release, uh, the margin of difference in the placement is the cut uh, in half with the Villas robotic system compared to a traditional knee replacement operation. The new system allows knee replacement surgeries, which typically require two surgeries, to require only one because of the advanced technology. So how handy is that? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And uh, at Mercy, all, all medical technology these days, it just amazes me. And you go in for a knee replacement these days and it's no big deal anymore. Right. I know the laparoscopic surgeries. I mean, I've had a couple surgeries in my life and uh, they haven't had to cut me all the way across. It's been great. I've got yeah. like a couple little incisions. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So what is there any technology in everyday life that you would be like just can only imagine that would make your life so much easier? You know, um, no, because it's like medical technology just amazes me what we're doing. And like our daughter's been through some surgeries and some tech technology uh, that I've never heard of magnet technology and things that they're using on the body these days that this makes an incredible difference. So I, I mean, it even goes beyond my imagination. It's crazy. Yeah. I agree. It's it's I I'm I'm thankful for things like AI, um, not fully embracing it. But, you know, when, when I get stuck on copywriting and I'm like, oh, I need another way to say this. Right. Uh, that's handy in terms of technology. So who knows where we'll be in the future? Yeah, the Jetsons. Yeah, lots, <laughs> lots of new stuff. Well, Arc of the Ozarks Autism and Neurodevelopment Center is now open. The new center provides quality evaluation and treatment services all in one convenient location, and they offer support to navigate the best options and resources that are available for children and families in Southwest Missouri. And that includes services like therapy and counseling, increased access to autism evaluations, and support for families. And Arc of the Ozarks Autism and Neurodevelopment Center is located at 2864 South Nettleton Avenue here in Springfield. And we love Arc here at BCFO because they send groups down to our warehouse in Ozark for neat repeats and help us sort clothing for the thrift stores. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Andy. Yeah, they're so, I mean, just sweet is the only way I can describe. They're just such sweet people. We love working with everybody from ARC. It's a great organization. That's awesome. Doing a good work. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Springfield Art Museum recently announced its anticipated closure. I was really worried when I heard this, but closure Uh only for the 2028 campaign project facility renovations. So the 2028, gosh, that sounds like a long ways away. Campaign. It's the museum's visionary comprehensive site plan for its building and grounds. According to the Springfield Art Museum, the extensive grounds work includes the naturalization of Fast Night Creek right around the area. That's already been completed. And the facility renovation is the next step now in achieving the goals. Construction is currently scheduled to begin January of 25 and is expected to continue through 2027. The goal of the transformational site plan will be complete by the Missouri um, the museum's 100th anniversary in 2008. 100 years. 2028. Yeah, did I say right? 2008? 2008. <laughs> I was way back when. Oh, I am right. Oh my gosh. That was so like, like 20 years ago. I can't <laughs> think of 2028 is too far I away. I can't either. Oh. 
Yeah, that whole master plan. I remember when I worked for the city of Springfield in the parks department, there's a lot that's been done due to the waterways and just the naturalization of that. Instead of having concrete uh, barriers, they've now naturalized it. It's mm-hmm. better for uh, water management and all of that. So, um, or storm water management. Uh, and I think it'll be neat to see how it ties in to the Grant Avenue Parkway because it's so close to that. I think there's some really neat master planning happening on the city level. So that's Here's something you might not know about the art museum. They schedule their exhibits like two years out. So if you want I something didn't. exhibited there, they've got people waiting in line for two years right now, just now, not to mention oh. any kind of closure for a while. Well, that makes me want to go and see the stuff that they have yeah. <laughs> while, yeah. while they have it, you know? Yeah, exactly. Well, uh, this in the news, Harvard University President Dr. Claudine Gay announced her resignation Tuesday, January 2nd, effective immediately. You guys probably remember this in the news, but according to reports, Gay was involved in a disastrous con- congressional hearing last month, which she and other university presidents failed to explicitly uh, say call for genocide of the Jewish people, uh, constituted bullying and harassment on campuses. Uh, Gay also had drawn widespread criticism after her accusations of plagiarism scandal emerged, and President Gay was Harvard's first black president, second woman president, and now the shortest Uh, running of any president in the history of Harvard after only six months. The Harvard Corporation announced uh, Alan M. Garber, who currently serves as provost and chief academic officer at Harvard. He'll step in as uh, interim president until the school finds a new leader. So quite quite the uh, surprise, but not surprised about that. So that was a hot seat, man. I I do not think I'd want to take that job right now. Yeah. I mean, I just remember that on Instagram, just like, it's a yes or a no question. And it was just so interesting to how they um, chose to answer that. So, right. Okay. I don't know if you're moving soon, Diana, but U-Haul recently released its growth index report for 2023. U-Haul says movers prefer destinations in the Southeast and the southwest regions of the U.S. last year. Can you guess what was the most popular state for migration in 2023? No idea. You know, okay, it was I Texas. Mean, oh, I used to live there. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty great to live in yeah. Texas. <laughs> Texas was number one. Florida, which you kind of expect, is number two. Then North Carolina, South Carolina, and Tennessee. Guess wow. what state came in last? I, I don't know. California. <laughs> I'm sorry I'm laughing, but that doesn't surprise me. I know. It's, uh, it's, it's that, you know, there's a whole shift going on. It's interesting, the population movement like that. Yeah. Have you noticed a lot of people? Well, not a lot. I mean, there's been a handful of people that I know that have moved from Oregon, um, California, really more from the West Coast and are like, bye. Yeah. <laughs> so it's yeah. just been interesting. Texas, that surprises me that that's the largest because it's one of the biggest states. So yeah. maybe you get more land there. I don't know. <laughs> maybe it's it might be a little bit an easier or less of a culture shock move because I always thought that people moving from the West Coast to the Midwest, there's got to be a big culture shock there for them. Maybe Texas is a little bit different from that. Yeah. And you can know. be bilingual in Texas. I mean, I yep. pretty much everything is in English and Spanish there. So mm-hmm. I, I've lost a lot of my Spanish since living there, but that was kind of fun. Yep. <laughs> Yo hablo un, un, un poquito, solamente un poquito de español. Okay. <laughs> okay. You, you just went over my head. Okay, all good. But, okay, so mark your calendars for January 8th. The Sonic is launching its new peanut butter bacon Super Sonic. It's a double cheeseburger with a peanut butter bacon shake. Could you eat that? I don't know. You know who would probably try it, though, is our kids. Our, I have two boys that are adventurous eaters, and they are just in eating everything mode. And I bet they would try it, and I bet they would love it. We peanut like peanut butter. butter we like burgers. I don't know about them yeah. together. I mean, it's a little bit I like, like bacon. We're- we were talking about uh, cashew chicken with the uh, with the peanut butter in it. You know, peanut butter goes with a lot of things. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, it's I love peanut butter, peanut butter and celery, peanut butter and crackers. So you sorry, pe- people with peanut allergies. I feel terrible for you. But. Right. Yeah. Well. Yeah. You have to find some some other vice. Probably chocolate. But what about peanut butter, chocolate, and bacon on a supersonic cheeseburger? I don't know. Like it's the cheeseburger that's throwing me off. Yeah. Like. 
peanut butter, chocolate, and bacon, like as a little dessert. I'm like, that could be good. Might you work. Know, or, or on a cupcake. I yeah. could, I could go for that. It's the burger that's throwing me off. So yeah. I don't know. I don't know. It, it's an experiment. We'll see. We should go try it. <laughs> <laughs> well, from uh, burgers to brides, uh, 2024 brides, be on the lookout. If you got engaged over Christmas um, or are maybe looking to tie the knot, you can attend the Met Bride Expo, which is a day of bridal fashion, photographers, videographers, wedding dress ideas, cakes, planning inspiration during the Metropolitan Wedding Expo happening this this Sunday, January 7th at the Springfield Expo Center. Discover top local vendors. You can e- enjoy exclusive fashion show and potentially win an amazing prize. I don't know what the prize is, but I'm sure it's amazing. Whether you're just engaged or finalizing details, do not miss this opportunity to connect with some really neat wedding professionals to make your wedding dreams come true. <laughs> so uh, I have been a part uh, when I worked for parks at this Metropolitan Wedding Expo, and it's really fun. You can taste a lot of the different uh, foods and cakes. And if you're wanting to cater a meal and meet with photographers and see their work. So it's a really uh, venue options. It's a really neat, uh, neat opportunity to go kind of wedding idea shopping. So do you have any wedding stories, Joe, from your wedding, you and Christine? uh, No, no. I I mean, I tell all upcoming newlyweds, I always tell them, look, here's what's going to happen. Something will fall apart at your wedding. Like True. the week before, the day before, the day of, just know that's going to happen and it'll get fixed. It always does. And it'll be perfect. Right? Yeah. I remember for our wedding, we, um, my parents were living in Germany at the time. So my parents couldn't really help plan my wedding. My mom loved to do that kind of thing. So we hired a wedding uh, coordinator and that was the best decision because the day of our wedding, <clears throat> my earring broke and we're like trying to take pictures and it was like, oh my gosh, my earring broke, which, you know, everything is super emotional on yeah. your wedding day. You want everything to be perfect. So my good old wedding coordinator, she went to Dillard's, got the earrings exchanged, all was saved. The photos turned out beautiful. <laughs> But you're right. Something will go wrong. And I feel like my other piece of advice is the wedding is just one day. You've got to invest in your marriage. So that is a lifetime. Mm -hmm. And uh, date your spouse. Show them some loving. And that's all I have to say about that. (laughs) I don't have any crazy wedding stories. I I know several weird things happened that day. But it is. It's all, all. By the way, it all becomes a blur, you know, because it's such a crazy day. How long have you guys been married now? Let's see. Uh-oh. We said Uh-oh. I do. I always say we said I do in 2002. So we're oh, now at 21 years. That's awesome. Yeah. We're 17. So Brian yeah. and I, and I'm, I'm so grateful. We, you know, everybody has kind of those challenging uh, changes in their life when you have kids or moving or job changes, but yeah, you choose to bend towards each other instead of away. So <laughs> yeah, that's what I like to say. Most well, of the time. Well, thank you, Joe, again for filling in. Happy Thursday, you guys. We hope you have a wonderful day and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. It's time for Around the Ozarks Wake Up Weather, sponsored by Scooter's Coffee. Here's your host, meteorologist, Abby Dyer. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to your Thursday. It is January 4th, 2024, and it's cold outside. We are starting off this morning in the mid and upper 20s across the region. It is going to be kind of a chilly start across the Ozarks today. And eventually, I think we'll see a high temperature of about 40 degrees. Better than yesterday, a little bit of a warm up and at least some sunshine in the forecast today. So we'll call it a seasonal day ahead. And uh, temperatures in the 40s, it could be worse, right? We're also going to stay dry in the forecast today. So that's a difference in the forecast as we get closer to the weekend. Things are about to get weird here in the weather department. Uh, It's going to be kind of a wild forecast here. So buckle up. I'll try and walk you through this day by day. Today, one of the nice ones in the Ozarks. Uh, Some folks making it to about 40 degrees. Others, I think here in Springfield with some additional sunshine in the forecast, could be closer to 45. The north breeze in the forecast. So it may be feeling like the low 40s out the door. Overall today, cold, winter-like, but dry across the region and no big major winds for us. 
All the activity today out in the Rockies as that powerful storm system continues to move its way from the West Coast into the center part of the country. For us, this is going to result in a light kind of rain-snow mix, a rather dreary weekend ahead for us. It's not going to rain and snow all weekend long, but we have these very light chances for winter precip on Friday. And then I see cloud cover that lingers in the forecast as we get closer to Saturday. So we will continue to deal with uh, some moisture and some dreary conditions as we round out the work week forecast and move into the first weekend of the new year. Storm system set to bring light rain and snow chances to the region starting tomorrow. And I really think most of this is going to fall as a rain snow mix. So if you're worried about impacts here, I'm thinking they will be very minimal. I mean, you might see some snowflakes, but it'll be mixed with a cold rain. And because temperatures haven't been just totally cold uh, over the last several days. In terms of road impacts, I'm expecting it to be very minimal. However, very late tonight, I'm talking late after midnight, we'll start to see some of these light rain snow chances. That's going to continue through the afternoon on Friday, through Friday evening, and then come to an end by Saturday morning. Uh, through the day on Friday, the light snow will initially start. It'll transition to this light rain snow mix, and then maybe transition back to snowfall late Friday night. Little to no impacts again, because we're mixing this with some rain and because temperatures aren't just so cold that we won't have any melting going on. So impacts will be little, but it won't be a great day to be out and about. I mean, really more of a nuisance event, but a cold and wet one at that. Temperatures on Friday will be closer to that 40 degree point, And I think we'll have something falling on the radar most of the day. By Saturday, we'll hold on to that lingering cloud cover. High temperatures stay in the low 40s. And the sunshine may come back for us a bit by Sunday. And temperatures will be out in the mid 40s. I'm going to tell you right now, I think the stores will be busy on Sunday. Uh, we have our next storm system ramping up for early next week. I know you've heard rumblings of this already. And yes, there's the potential for winter weather. Either way, uh, there's some moisture heading to the Ozarks, whether that be in the form of snowfall, wet, heavy snowfall, or just a lot of rain moving our direction as we get closer to the first part of next week. By Monday, I think it's a rain event for us, so there's still time to prepare on Monday. And then by Tuesday, we could see that rain change over into a snowfall event that at this point looks like it could accumulate in the Ozarks. Again, that's going to be for the Monday through Wednesday time frame of next week. We've still got nearly five days to hammer out the details for you on that one. But confidence is increasing here that a large storm system is going to bring this widespread moderate precip and very gusty winds to the region both Monday and Tuesday. Exact impacts are unclear at the moment. So just stay tuned. I'll keep you, you know, abreast to any of the updated changes that you need to know to this forecast. But right now, we don't know the exact track of the low pressure system. And that's really what's going to dictate what's going to happen. Precip type, it's going to be one of those events that's a total headache to figure out, you know, where's the rain? Where's the snow? Is there any sleet? Is there any freezing rain in here? We'll have to look that up. And then the potential precip amounts are also in question at this point. So really all you can do right now is be aware of it, continue to monitor the forecast. And uh, if you have any travel planned for next week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday timeframe, uh, just make sure you're staying up to date on the forecast and come up with a backup plan in case you need to implement it. Around the country, what's making headlines is light snowfall over the higher elevations out in the west. We've got snow for the central and southern plains on Friday. We'll get into a bit of that as well here in the Ozarks. And then the snowstorm for the northeast this weekend, all the way from Boston, back through Washington, D.C., up through New York State. They're expecting anywhere from 3 to 11 inches of snow in the Northeast on Saturday. So that will be the big headline weather-wise over the country uh, this weekend before the next storm system wallops the center portion of the country. And we'll be involved in that one Monday and Tuesday of next week. So fun and games to start off 2024. All right, here is a look at the Around the Ozarks Wake Up Weather Brain Twister questions sponsored by Scooter's Coffee. This one, who invented cotton candy? A, an American dentist. B, a Dutch doctor. C, a German grandma. And D, a French chef. 
Those were the options. And honestly, I think they all seem pretty plausible here. American dentist, that would be ironic. Um, a Dutch doctor, it's probably not the healthiest thing. Also a kind of an ironic thing. Uh, maybe a German grandma seems to me, or a French chef, seems like both of those could come up with cotton candy. The answer, actually A, an American dentist of all things. I, cotton candy is like the number one thing that just sticks to your teeth. I need to brush my teeth even just talking about cotton candy. Uh, it was invented though by Dr. Morrison, William Morrison, an American 1897. He teamed up with a candy maker, John C. Wharton. They invented a machine that heated up sugar in this spinning bowl that had several tiny holes in it and created what we know now as cotton candy. It does kind of have like a floss-like texture. So maybe that's Maybe that was his inspiration, or maybe he was just trying to drum up business for himself. Um, after people ate his cotton candy, I bet his office was kind of full. A, an American dentist, the answer to the brain twister question today. All right, here is your question for tomorrow. Napoleon Bonaparte was once attacked by which group of animals? Do you think he was attacked by A, alpacas, B, deer, C, foxes, or D, rabbits? You can submit your guess. Do that at AroundTheOzarks.com. You'll be entered to win a $20 gift card to Scooter's Coffee every single day if you are in the correct entries pool there. So uh, chances to win over at AroundTheOzarks.com. Thanks so much for listening this morning on Around the Ozarks Wake Up Weather. Enjoy this dry day before that rain-snow mix moves in tomorrow, and I'll be back with another update for you early tomorrow morning.